Welcome everybody, this is Information Service Engineering, lecture number two, Natural Language Processing, part one. In this last section of lecture number two, we will talk about natural language processing techniques after we have already learned about applications that are based on natural language processing. So we start with the most easiest thing. The most easiest thing, if you get some text, you want to split the text in smaller parts. So imagine you get a document. First, what you do, of course, if it's written in natural language, try to split the text into simple sentences. You might already have an idea how to do that. So you're simply looking for a period and after a period you do a sentence break. But of course, sometimes periods are also used for abbreviations or let's say for decimals. So it's not as easy as, as it might seem. However, of course, this is an already solved problem to split text into single sentences. You do not want only, let's say, sentences. You might simply split a stream of text into words, phrases, symbols, and other meaningful elements. And usually these kind of elements are called tokens. So therefore, this process is tokenization. We have provided here you screenshots of tools as well as links. So if you go to the slides in the presentation, simply click on the links and you will be directly on the web page of the according tool and you can try it out. Here we have a sentence here again about um, our friend, the uh, French physicist and mathematician um, Jean-Baptiste uh, Fourier or Joseph Fourier. And um, uh, this sentence then is simply broken down in simply in tokens, in words. And of course, you have to distinguish. So do you break down in words? What do you do then with the punctuation? So what do you do with the periods, the comma and so on? So there are several variants how to do that. And you can try them out here also in this demo where I have linked exactly um, a tool for tokenization. Okay. After you split down your sentence in several parts, you want to know what these parts are about. So what do they mean? What type of word is this? And determining the type of a word here, this is referred to as part of speech tagging. So this is marking up a word in a text as corresponding to a particular part of speech based on both its definition and its context. Okay. Let's have a brief look here what we have. We have again here the sentence French mathematician and physicist Jean-Baptiste Joseph du Fourier is probably best known for his works in thermodynamics, yada, 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 yada. And you see here um, the, the demo on the web page of Core NLP gives you a part of speech tagging of exactly these sentences. And what you see here, you see all of the words here in a specific color. So for example, all the nouns, they are blue. And there are several types of nouns distinguished. For example, there are proper nouns, which are things that have been given a name. So individual things that can be directly identified, like our Jean-Baptiste Joseph du Fourier. And there are regular nouns like, uh, for example, physicist. So these are general nouns or, or mathematician. And you have here, for example, adjectives. French, for example, is an adjective. And all of these different parts of speech, they are tagged or abbreviated here with, with a specific acronym. JJ means, uh, for example, adjective. NNP means a proper noun. Or here, BBZ, this is a verb, for example. And you don't have to worry about all of these abbreviations. We will do part of speech tagging later then also in the lecture, and you will learn about the meaning of exactly these tags. For now only, take into account part of speech tagging what you give there is you mark up every word in a text according to its function to its part of speech okay so let's continue after you have determined what is the type of a specific word you want to see let's say more relationships of exactly the sentence you are parsing here and to parse a sentence means you try to come up or to analyze this sentence, this string of symbols, whether it conforms to the rules of your grammar. So, and what you do there by parsing it, you build a so-called syntax tree of the sentence. And this is constituency parsing. You see here again, our, our sentence, let's have a look at that. So Fourier also was the first to describe the greenhouse effect. 
And if you do constituency parsing, so you simply go here again, follow that link, and then you can do it directly on your own. You see again, first thing what they do is uh, they determine first part of speech. So Fourier, it's a proper noun, also was, so here we have a verb. And you see here the categories in the constituency parse a tree that are, for example, noun phrases. So for example, here Fourier is not only a proper noun, it's an entire noun phrase. Or, uh, for example, if you look here at was, this is a verb phrase. And the verb phrase is even more so. It contains also another noun phrase, which is the first to do something. And here to describe the greenhouse effect, this is again a verb phrase and so on and so on. So these are further broken down syntactic categories that you can then identify here in the parse tree. So you see here the uh, con constituency parse tree of that sentence and then by that you can determine specific relationships between the single parts of the sentence. So what comes first, what belongs to which and this is the so-called constituency parsing. There is another type of parsing. This is referred to as dependency parsing. What you do there is dependency parsing is nothing else but an approximation of semantic relations between the arguments you see here. And it relies on direct binary grammatical relations among the words that you see. So what it does, it you draw relations from a fixed inventory of grammatical relations that we see here on the right side. So we have clausal argument relations. We have nominal modifier relations and so on and so on. And then if we look here at the uh, dependency parsing, we see here which kind of word does belong to another word in which sentence. So which is the kind of relation that these words are related with each other. And so again, they form groups. You see what belongs together and what exactly is the structure or a structural analysis of exactly this kind of sentence. So this is dependency parsing. One thing that is more interesting for us than also is the so-called named entity recognition. What is that? So there you try to locate and to classify atomic elements of the sentence into predefined categories. So for example, you try to find out names, you try to find out persons, organizations, locations, as well as sometimes also time, quantities, monetary values, and so on and so on. So let's have a look here at the example. We have again the example on March 21st, 1768. French mathematician and physicist Jean-Baptiste Joseph de Fourier was born. And the entity recognition system that you find here under this link determines that here March 21, this is a date and it also you see here normalizes the date according to a specific format. And then it finds out French is a nationality, mathematician and physicist um, the system determines as being a title. And here the entire Jean-Baptiste Joseph de Fourier determines that this must be some kind of a person. So often you might know also if you don't know the name of that guy, you will find out that if somebody was born at a specific date, that most likely is a person. And this also statistically is somehow how these list systems uh, then also learn or might learn on the occurrence, let's say, of specific words uh, in the sentence to determine what exactly, in which order they come, etc., to find out what is a person, what is a date, and so on and so on. Because they often are, let's say, initiated or followed by specific propositions or other words that determine then exactly what kind of category this word belongs to. So if you have now determined the category of the word, you might also try to find out what exactly is it. So which person is it now? We know that it's a person, but we would like to connect exactly this word, this surface form, we already have learned that term, to a specific entity in a knowledge base or let's say in Wikipedia. So this is then referred to as named entity resolution or word sense disambiguation, especially if things are ambiguous, you want to find out which one is it now. So if there are several people named Fourier, you would like to know which one is the Fourier we are talking about. What you see here on the slides here is an example of an entity linking system that has been applied to a, a block. The block here, the web block is called Sci-Hi block. We will uh, more frequently refer to that block in this lecture because it's a nice showcase for natural language processing 
technology. So here is an article on the greenhouse effect and the entities you see here underlined in the text, they are linked to entities in a knowledge base. So usually here, for example, in DBpedia or there are other knowledge bases you will also get to know later on like Wikidata or Yago. I can show you this for example also here live in our example. So this is the SciHi blog. This is the article on Joseph Fourier. And what you see here are um, texts that are underlined and by hovering over it automatically the entity in the knowledge base is queried and the information that the knowledge base returns about that entity is here displayed in a structured form. So you find out exactly without leaving here the document facts about uh, Joseph Fourier, for example, that his uh, birthplace was Auxerre in France, uh, in France, or uh, his birthplace Auxerre also was in the department of Burgundy, whatever. Uh, and you can also, of course, here try out other things like, for example, what's Fourier analysis, what is uh, thermodynamics. Sometimes it takes a while and then it loads exactly what is exactly in the knowledge base available about exactly this term. So this is a small application based on entity linking that we have now learned here about in the course of the lecture. Okay, let's continue further techniques. What else is there? Semantic role labeling. Semantic role labeling goes one step further and finds out, okay, what are now the constituents of that sentence? What is a subject? What is a predicate? And what is an object? And exactly these kind of subject, predicate, objects are extracted from sentences via so-called semantic role labeling. So if we look at that, for example, we see here lots of entities that have been discovered as being a subject. So entire French mathematician and physicist Jean-Baptiste Joseph du Fourier, that's the subject. And he then was the first to do something. So there is a the relation was the first, this is then the object, and was the first to describe. Describe is again a relation and what has been described, the greenhouse effect, this is then again an object. So you see here, this is semantic role labeling. Just try it out to see how this works. And one last thing I also want to show you, what is also an NLP technique, this is the so-called co-reference resolution. What is that? That's also known as anaphora resolution. And this is simply, we want to determine which phrases in a document or in a discourse refer to the same underlying entity. Let's have a look here at our example. We have again here the two sentences we already know. First one that on March uh, 21, 1768, our friend Joseph Fourier was born. And then he is probably best known for his work in thermodynamics, where he introduced the concept of the Fourier analysis named in honor after him. So what does this co-reference resolution do? First of all, it determines, okay, both sentences seem to be from the same speaker. Okay, so this is speaker one, speaker one. And then it determines entities and references to these entities. And here, for example, this is a co-referenced entity. It's called here co-referenced entity number seven. So this French mathematician we are talking about is referred to in the subsequent sentence with here, he, his, he, and him. This refers to the guy here in the first sentence, and this is determined automatically with the help of, of course, co-reference resolution, which is uh, a sophisticated natural language processing technique. Okay, this was only a very brief introduction without you know, exactly explaining how these techniques then work, but we will go deeper into that later on in the course of this lecture. And then in the next part of the lecture, this is already the next lecture, lecture number three, natural language processing two. Then we will dive into the very first, let's say techniques, like for example, we will first see about uh, NLP challenges. We will see how to conduct experiments. And then we will talk about regular expressions and finite automata then as our first means or technologies, which are able to perform this kind of NLP techniques that we have seen just now in this part of the lecture.